Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with the review for Return of the Obra Dinn, one of my favorite puzzle games of all time. Obra Dinn was created by Lucas Pope, who also created Papers, Please, another highly acclaimed puzzle game. If any of you actually played the game and recommend it, please let me know in the comments. I have considered giving it a try, but the gameplay videos never make it look enticing. I wonder if it's a game you really need to play yourself instead of watching. This game, on the other hand, is visually deeply engaging right from the start. The Obra Din is an East India Man trade ship that departed with 51 crewmen and nine passengers in 1803. Five years later, the ship reappears and everyone aboard appears to be dead. The East India Company sends a chief inspector to investigate the ship and determine what happened on board. You play as this chief inspector and the game will randomly decide if you are male or female. If you don't like the gender that is chosen, you will need to create a new profile, start a new game, and hope next time you get the gender you want. This only impacts three lines of voice dialogue at the beginning of the game. Otherwise, your character never speaks. It won't be long before you start using the pocket watch, which allows you to see the exact moment of a person's death. Armed with nothing but this device in your wits, you will need to piece together what happened to all 60 individuals on this ship. A logbook will assist in tracking this information. This book has pictures of everyone, but no names. For each individual, you must figure out their name, how they died, and who killed them if they were murdered. With that out of the way, let's get into what I liked about the experience. This story is dark, gruesome, and horrifying, oftentimes in ways you do not expect. It's bad enough watching the way so many people turn against each other, but the way creatures from the sea show up to wreak havoc is terrifying. Happy endings for the people you investigate are few and far in between. I absolutely loved it. I love the look of this game as well. It's not only unique, but also very daring. I am certain a lot of people wrote this off as soon as they saw the black and white palette, but it's perfect for the experience. When you use the pocket watch, a person's moment of death is frozen in time, allowing you to walk around and explore what occurred. The looks of horror, pools of blood, dead bodies, and vain attempts to stop the carnage are all brought into sharp focus by the minimalist design of the graphics. You can switch to other layouts, but regardless, only two colors will show in the game at one time. The sound is also incredible with great music, fantastic sound effects, and brilliant voice acting across the board. The voice acting in particular is very important because sometimes hearing a person's accent gives you a great clue about who they are. Characters are completely still during death scenes, so you never see them talk or interact. There are many people whose voices you hear multiple times long before you actually know their faces. Speaking of which, this game doesn't handhold you at all when it comes to deducing people's identities. You need to pay attention to clothes that might reveal a person's station. Voices help you determine where they are from, or maybe you'll get a scene where their bed is shown with a unique identifying object. Anything can be used to help narrow down the possibilities, which makes you want to check every detail. Finally, I think it's really cool the way the logbook works. All 60 names are listed along with all possible ways they could have died or been killed. The logbook only confirms you have entered correct information if there are at least three correct entries. This makes it nearly impossible to just guess your way into correct answers, especially at the start of the game. It also keeps track of all the death scenes you have already viewed and makes it easy for you to figure out where to go if you want to view them again. Deaths are revealed to you completely out of order. In fact, the last few deaths on the ship are the first death scenes you view. The logbook lists death scenes in the order they actually occurred on the ship, not according to when you find them, which helps establish a timeline of events. All right, now let's move to the one aspect of this game I am neutral on. Many important details are not noted in your logbook, forcing you to use a pen and paper. 
For example, you might realize that a person is Welsh and an officer, but still not be sure how they died. The logbook doesn't track those kinds of individual details for anyone. On the one hand, I understand that if something was noted in the logbook that the player didn't actually recognize, it could damage the puzzle solving experience. On the other hand, there's a lot of details and moving parts to this game, so I kind of wished more information was all in one place. Quick note before we get into what I don't like about the game. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate you hitting the like button. This information tells me which content the channel is enjoying and helps my video spread to more people. I really appreciate all of the support. All right, now let's get into what I disliked about this game. Every time you enter a memory, you have to leave through a door that stays closed for a set period of time. This means there will be many times when you have viewed everything you wanted to in a particular death scene, but cannot move on because you are standing around waiting for the door to open. This gets tedious, especially when the door is difficult to find. It's even more annoying when you are going back to previous deaths looking for little clues to help you solve remaining entries. This problem is exacerbated by the slow movement of your main character. There is no sprint option, and this is fine when you are exploring new areas. But when you are going back through old memories, or searching through parts of the ship you have already been in, there is definitely a strong desire to just run through to your next objective. Finally, I think the ending could have been better. It's hard to explain without getting into spoilers, but the journey feels like an epic adventure, and the ending doesn't do it justice. This is especially true if you don't finish the logbook, which is possible to do. Finishing the logbook gives you additional ending content that is fun and highly enjoyable to see, but doesn't really improve the ending, nor does it provide a real epilogue or summary of all that you have done. I found that disappointing, especially considering how great everything else is. Bottom line, I had an amazing time with Return of the Oberdin. Truly unique gameplay and art style, a wonderful story, and memorable characters all combined for a fantastic gaming experience. I am really looking forward to what Lucas Pope does next. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.